Hey guys, welcome back. So tonight we are in my tomato area. I am pruning tomatoes. Figured I would go ahead and take you guys along because I'm doing things a little bit differently this year and there's some things I have learned that I'm doing differently from last year. So I figured I would just kind of share. The tomatoes have grown an absolute ton because we have pretty much had rain every single day minus one day in the last two weeks. And the day it didn't rain was the day I filmed the garden tour last week. It's been raining a lot and I actually pruned these about a week ago, but they are growing an absolute ton. And the way I'm doing things this year um, is a little bit more hands-on since I do have indeterminate varieties. So this year I introduced indeterminate tomatoes to my garden. In previous years, I've just done determinate. So the differences between the two are determinates will grow to a certain like height and size and they will pretty much produce all of their tomatoes at one time when an indeterminate variety pretty much grows to an indeterminate height and will just continue to grow. So I did introduce indeterminates this year. I am still doing all paste varieties of tomatoes this year minus this one. So this one right behind me is actually a cherry tomato variety called Pink Bumblebee, but I have majority San Marzano, Amish paste, and then I also have like half that amount in just Roma tomatoes right along this other side here. There are differences in the way you have to prune. And last year, I really didn't know that. I would watch pruning videos and people would just be like, do this, blah, 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 blah. But what I ended up learning is determinate varieties don't really like to be pruned. The more you prune a determinate variety, the less fruit you are going to get off of that plant. I did get a lot of harvest last year, as some of you know. I think I was still able to get I think right around 30 jars of sauce total. I'm hoping to get more than that this year. I'm down to one jar of sauce. So I would really like to be able to make a year's worth of sauce. I still don't know if I will be fully there this year or not, but I know I'm getting close. Either way, there are differences in how you prune. So one thing I did learn with the determinate variety is pretty much any sucker below the very first set of blossoms, go ahead and prune off. Um, that way it gets adequate airflow, especially at the base of the plant. One thing I will still continue to do is monitor just how bushy these plants do get. And if I see any type of disease at all, I will go ahead and cut that away just to make sure the plant stays healthy. So with these indeterminate types, pretty much you are cutting off every sucker and you are just making sure you are sticking to one or two stems. I have quite a few that split off quite early. So I have two stems on both of those, but there are a few where I just have it single stem. Indeterminate plants are absolutely crazy. And if you just continuously let those suckers go, your plant is going to be massive. So pretty much this is your sucker and I will show you on the tomato plant what I'm talking about in just a second, but you can prune these off, stick these in water, and you will actually create a whole other tomato plant. And this will actually do the same thing when it's connected on the plant. But either way, the indeterminates have been really, really interesting. I have them along these cattle panels here and they are already growing an absolute ton. I know I will eventually have to add probably some bamboo to just lengthen them even further, especially with our wind here in Kansas. These will probably try to top and fall over pretty fast once uh, once they get to the top. But either way, let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about as far as what my game plan is for these indeterminates and these cattle panels and also the determinants. That way you can get a closer look. All right, so this is an Amish paste here and it definitely needs to be trellised up and there's quite a few suckers. So let me go ahead and point that out. There's a sucker here, 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 and also right here. So one thing to look for if you're ever unsure is your stem will always go at a 90 to your sun leaf and then at this 45 degree will be your sucker. So we will go ahead and just snap that off. You can snap them off pretty fairly easy. Um, I mean you will get this loveliness on your hand um, but honestly it's easier and faster than just taking a pair of um, pruners if you need to. And again if you want more tomato plants go ahead and stick this in some water and all of these little hairs here will create more roots and you have yourself another tomato plant so i'm going to go through 
and actually prune the rest of these. I've already done the other two there. And then I'm going to also trellis them up. This is what I use. It's nothing fancy. I like it just because this little container here is really easy just to cut the twine off real fast. One thing though with this type of twine, I will link it below if you want it. Don't tie it too tight. There are times where, for example here, this will continue to get bigger and I actually need to go ahead and just cut that off and retie it because I tied it a little too tight and these will continue to grow. So you definitely don't want this to just sink into the plant. That's not good. This won't expand with the plant. There are some that do, but again, this is this, this is what I use. So um, I'm going to do that. So one thing I want to show you guys as well is sometimes on the bottom of these plants you will have these little offshoots come off on the bottom and over here kind of where old leaves used to be that you probably pruned off before. Go ahead and prune those off as well. They pretty much act the same way. They're just going to suck energy out of your plant and you really don't want them. Another thing I wanted to mention that I really, really like with cattle panels is the fact that I can actually weave these through. Um, of course, that comes at risk because you could top your plant. That's why I try to make sure I'm maneuvering and doing this often out here. It does make sure it feels even sturdier, especially with uh, my Kansas wind here. So one thing you may have noticed is, yes, I do have tomato cages. And one thing I said I wasn't going to do this year was keep tomato cages, but these are all determinants. I think they will still work really well with my determinants. They worked pretty well last year with them. I just kind of pruned wrong to where they didn't really catch themselves right. I think that was a big thing. These are really sturdy ones. Honestly, if these were any smaller, I don't think I would use them at all. These do still work pretty well. So I went ahead and used them. Cattle panels got a little bit more expensive this year. So I went ahead and used what I had, especially since I did expand the tomato area quite a bit. So like I said earlier, um, I'm pretty much done pruning off anything off of these Roma tomato plants unless I absolutely have to. So that is actually kind of the nice feature of doing determinate varieties is they're a little bit more hands off than the indeterminate type. So keep that in mind for future years. Um, but either way, tomatoes are a pretty hands-on crop and that's something I really didn't think of especially going into gardening um, I was like wow I have to mess with these tomatoes a lot which what you do um, if you want tomatoes one thing I find so crazy so I went back to just last year's videos and this is one reason why I actually started to film the garden last year is just to see the progress I have made through the years and this garden is insanely more advanced than last year's garden. I'll make sure I tag the video up in the cards. Either way, it's just, it's really crazy to see, one, how much more progress I have on tomatoes. I wasn't even getting little baby tomatoes until the first week of June last year, and I was starting to get little baby tomatoes on these plants as of, I think it was the first or second, it was the first week of May. So. A whole month I'm a whole month ahead especially with tomatoes this year and that is due to how I seed started differently this year these plants were really big when I put them in but it is really cool to see how much further along I am this year than last year and I honestly might be able to get a whole second crop of tomatoes depending on how healthy these plants stay I might have to replant. As of right now, um, I don't need any of these, so these are going straight in the compost. And one thing I do need to do tonight is I am going to spray all the plants with neem. I have not really been able to spray anything because of the rain, so, oh, oh, there is, there's something in my eye. Oh, man, I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? I am going to spray neem because, um, I can't get on top of the bugs since the rain has just been going for weeks on end. The ladybugs have helped and the plants are looking significantly better. Like there's some plants that are looking barely touched now. So the ladybugs did their work, but there's still a few that have quite a bit of pest on them. So I'm going to go ahead and spray everything since I haven't 
in at least over a week and we're not supposed to have more rain for <laughs> I think like a day and a half so really not that long we're supposed to have rain for like three days in a row again but I have not had water at all in like three or four weeks so that's been nice but I am gonna go ahead and spray neem so if you don't know where is my where is it I did get it ready so when it comes to neem all I do is mix about a tablespoon to two tablespoons to a gallon of water and these little garden sprayers if you don't have one of these I suggest having multiple on hand because these are handy when you're seed starting when you're spraying stuff if you're doing like a watery mixture or any type of like hydrogen peroxide neem oil but yeah you just throw it in there spray the plant like so and yeah ladybugs won't be harmed by this it's mostly just soft um, soft shelled creatures that will be harmed by this if they ingest it it does something I don't really remember all the technical stuff but I do know it works great and it's one of my absolutely favorite organic pesticides so another thing to know about neem oil is if you're having like any start of like fungal so like any type of blight and stuff like that it will help obviously you're not going to um be able to cure like your blight or anything like that but neem can help with any type of like fungal problems your plant is having um, as well so it can be nice just to regularly spray it can be expensive just to continuously do typically if it's not raining I will just spray once or twice a week max just to keep on it just because for some reason bugs bugs love my gardens I think a lot of people around me don't garden so they're like wow check out this girl's place let's hang here and then they all just come here and I have an overabundance of bad bugs sometimes I'd also like to note if you are spraying try to spray up at the bottom of the leaf living in Kansas or anywhere where it's windy also don't be in the path of where it's windy because that just came at me and if you ever smelled neem you know it doesn't smell good so let's do that again spray underneath the leaf like that like so because most of your aphids and things that are the problem are going to be underneath the leaf All right, guys, I think that's going to conclude it for me today. I just wanted to share what I was doing with tomatoes this year and a little bit of my knowledge to maybe help you out a little bit on your journey. The sun is setting and I wanna go wash my hands since they are a gross tomato -y mess. That's actually like the one thing I absolutely hate about growing tomatoes. Your hands just smell gross and they get gross, but either way, I'll see you guys all next week. Bye.